One of the biggest turning points of the Second World War was the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. On the 7th of December 1941, 2,403 Americans were killed during the surprise attack from the Japanese. However, it marked a completely new chapter in the Second World War. The conflict that would ensue between the Americans and the Japanese led to different innovations and tactics. However, one Japanese development is remembered today for being particularly notorious. The development of the kamikaze attack led to one of the most deadly military strategies being deployed in the conflict, particularly in the Pacific theatre. Today we're going to look at the origins of the kamikaze, and look at some specific kamikaze attacks, assessing their impact. Remember, if you do enjoy these videos, please support the channel by subscribing. The term kamikaze is usually translated to mean divine wind. It's been used since 1281 in Japan to refer to major typhoons that dispersed fleets who invaded Japan under Kublai Khan in 1274. A Japanese monoplane that made a record-breaking flight from Tokyo to London before the Second World War in 1937 was also named the Kamikaze. This plane would then become the prototype for the Mitsubishi Ki-15. As we know and understand the term today, we associate it with the suicide of a pilot who is willing to inflict as much damage on an enemy by crashing his plane into a ship. Before the formation of kamikaze units, pilots had to make deliberate crashes as a last resort when their planes had suffered severe damage. Pilots would also do this as they would not want to risk being captured and wanted to inflict as much damage as they could on the enemy. These situations occurred in not just Axis Air Forces, but also in Allied Air Forces. During the various battles in 1942, in particular the Battle of Midway, irreparable damage was inflicted upon the Imperial Japanese Naval Air Service. They could no longer put together a large number of fleet carriers with well-trained air crews. At Midway in June 1942, the Japanese lost as many air crews in a single day as their pre-war training program lost in a year. Following this, campaigns in the Solomon Islands and New Guinea further depleted the air crews. During 1943 to 1944, the US steadily advanced towards Japan, and newer US made planes such as the Hellcat or the Corsair outclassed Japan's fighter planes. Tropical diseases, as well as a shortage of spare parts and fuel, made operations more tricky for the Japanese. By the Battle of the Philippine Sea, in June 1944, the Japanese had to make do with poor aircraft with inexperienced pilots against the better trained and more experienced US Navy airmen. During this battle, the Japanese lost 400 carrier-based planes and pilots, and Allied aviators called it the Great Marianas Turkey Shoot. According to some sources, the first officer to officially propose a kamikaze attack tactic was Captain Motoharo Okamura. In August 1944, it was announced by the Domai News Agency that a flight instructor called Takio Tagata was training pilots for suicide missions. One source states that the first kamikaze mission happened on the 13th of September 1944. A group of pilots from the 31st Fighter Squadron on the Negros Islands decided to launch a suicide attack. First Lieutenant Takeshi Kasai and a sergeant were selected. Their two fighter planes had a 100 kilogram bomb attached to each and they took off before dawn, planning a crash into the carriers. They never returned, but there is also no record of an enemy plane colliding with an Allied ship. According to other sources, on the 14th of October, the USS Reno was hit by a deliberately crashed Japanese plane. Rear Admiral Masafumi Arima is sometimes credited with inventing the kamikaze tactic. He led an attack of 100 Yokosuka D-4Y dive bombers against the USS Franklin around the 15th of October 1944. The Admiral himself was killed when part of his plane hit the Franklin. Arima was then posthumously promoted to Vice Admiral for his actions. On the 17th of October, the Allies assaulted the Sulalan Island. The Japanese Navy's first air fleet began the impossible task of trying to defeat the Allies. Their commandant, Vice Admiral Takajiri Anishi decided to form a suicide offensive force known as a Special Attack Unit. He told officers that the only way to carry out the operation was to put a 250kg bomb onto a Zero 
and let it crash into a US carrier. The first kamikaze unit was born when Commander Tamai asked a group of 23 talented student pilots to volunteer for a special attack force. All of the pilots asked volunteered, and they were placed under the command of Lieutenant Yukio Seki. Seki would become the 24th chosen kamikaze pilot. He later said, Japan's future is bleak if it is forced to kill one of its best pilots. I am not going on this mission for the Emperor or the Empire. I am going because I was ordered to. Vice Admiral Onishi would tell the unit their nobility and spirit would keep the homeland and empire from ruin. Several other suicide attacks were carried out from other units in a special attack force and these have been credited as the first kamikaze attacks. On the 21st of October 1944, a Japanese aircraft deliberately crashed into the foremast of heavy cruiser HMAS Australia. This killed 30 personnel, including the captain, and wounded 64 others. The sinking of the ocean tug USS Sonomar on the 24th of October is listed by some sources as the first ship to be lost to a kamikaze strike. On the 26th of October, 55 kamikazes had damaged large escort carriers, the USS Sangamon, Swanee, Santee and other smaller escort ships. In total, 7 carriers were hit, as well as 40 other ships. 5 of these sunk and 23 were heavily damaged. There were early successes with the kamikaze, which led to the immediate expansion of the program, with the next few months seeing 2,000 planes being made for these attacks. Japan at this time was suffering from intense bombing from the Boeing B-29 Superfortress, and the Japanese military instructed pilots to crash into them. This proved to be less successful than attacking warships, as the bombers were faster and a smaller target. Also, the B-29 could defend itself using its defensive onboard weaponry. On the 11th of March 1945, the US carrier USS Randolph was hit by a kamikaze that had flown around 2,500 miles from Japan. Purpose-built kamikaze planes were now also being constructed. Planes such as the Yokosuka Oka were now being deployed from March 1945, and throughout this year, the Japanese began to stockpile these weapons. Because of the innovation of the kamikaze tactic, the US had to adapt their defensive systems to counteract the attacks. Allied gunners developed techniques such as light rapid fire from anti-aircraft weapons such as the 40mm Bafors and the 20mm Horlicken autocannons. Both of these were effective. The Yokosuka Oka would present a different problem for anti-aircraft fire though, due to the fact their velocity made it very difficult to hit them. The peak of kamikaze attacks came during April to June 1945 during the Battle of Okinawa. On the 6th of April, hundreds of attacks occurred and these were first focused on Allied destroyers and then on carriers in the middle of the fleets. Suicide attacks by planes of boats at Okinawa sank or put out of action at least 30 American warships. The attacks used over 1,400 planes. During this, the USS Laffrey got the nickname the ship that wouldn't die as it survived six kamikaze attacks during the battle. US carriers suffered heavily from kamikaze strikes in one instance, 389 men were killed in one attack on the USS Bunker Hill. The ship was fully fueled and armed when it was hit. There were also hits on British ships which resulted in 20 deaths. The aircraft carrier, HMS Formidable, was hit on the 4th of May 1945. Although the kamikaze was killed by gunfire, it still managed to drop a bomb that detonated, making a 3 metre long crater on the flight deck. The damage then caused a fire. This attack killed 8 and wounded 47. Quick repairs were then made to the ship and by 5pm that evening, aircraft was able to land on it. The final kamikaze strikes coincided with the end of the war and occurred hours after Japan's surrender was announced on the 15th of August 1945. Although kamikazes had caused some of the heaviest casualties on US carriers, they had sacrificed around 4,000 pilots by 1945. Overall, the kamikazes were unable to turn the tide of the war. Japanese propaganda would state that missions sank 81 ships and damaged 195, and the kamikazes attributed 
for 80% of US losses in the final stages of the war in the Pacific. US sources however state that approximately 2,800 kamikazes sank 34 naval ships, damaged 368 others and killed 4,900 soldiers, wounding over 4,800. They also say that 14% of kamikazes survived to score a hit on a ship, with only 8.5% of all ships being hit by a kamikaze sinking. When recruiting men to become kamikazes, the Japanese forces would claim that there were so many volunteers, they were like a swarm of bees. At one point there were twice as many people volunteering as aircraft that was available. Many kamikaze pilots believed that their death would pay the debt that they owed, and they would show their love that they had for their families and also the emperor. When they were trained, they would go through an incredible and strenuous training regime, which would be joined with brutal corporal punishment. The pilots would be repeatedly struck in the face. This was to build up a soldier's fighting spirit. This however sometimes would eliminate the patriotism once felt by the pilots. Pilots were also given manuals which documented how to attack, but also how to keep their health in the best condition. These instructions were meant to make the pilots mentally ready to face death. Before kamikazes would depart their final mission, ceremonies would be carried out. Many army officer kamikazes would take their swords along with them, and the kamikaze would be issued with a Nambu pistol. This would be given to the pilots to end their lives if they risked being captured flying over enemy territory. At these ceremonies they also read a death poem, which stems back from the samurai tradition, who did this before committing seppuku, the ritual suicide by disembowelment. The kamikaze is a legend that today is still talked about. What is baffling however, is the mental fortitude and commitment to the emperor that the kamikaze would have to have. To give your death going out in a blaze of glory, hoping to kill as many enemies as possible, seems a rather medieval and baffling concept. We're going to end this video by revisiting the bee analogy. Although the Japanese Air Force once referred to the future kamikazes as a swarm of bees, they were much more similar than just the sheer amount of volunteering for the suicide missions. For bees, when they sting, inflict a severe amount of pain. However, once the damage is done, simply die. Much like the kamikaze pilot, giving their sting away to inflict maximum pain in the name of the Imperial Japanese Air Force. Thank you for watching The Untold Past. To support the channel, please subscribe. Once again, thank you for watching.